As a Bricks developer, you want to allow your clients to be able to add and edit their own content. Well, we don't want to give our clients access to the Bricks editor to edit their content. <coughs> That'd be crazy. Imagine though, if you could provide your clients with a range of custom-made Gutenberg blocks for them to use, pre-designed and custom-built by you to match the rest of their website. Like this call to action, or this one here, or even this entire pre-designed section here. And what if your client could easily edit the content for each block, but not be able to mess with your design? And here's the kicker. What if you could build this range of custom Gutenberg blocks in bricks? Being able to build your custom Gutenberg blocks in bricks would mean those blocks would automatically follow whatever design system or framework you've used for the rest of the site for 100% design consistency everywhere. And what if you made changes to the master version of a block in Bricks here and have that change update everywhere your client has used that block right across the entire site? That would make future maintenance and updates stupidly easy. Yes, this is the holy grail of providing the best possible content editing experience for your clients. But till now, to build these kind of custom blocks is kind of complicated. You either need to know React, I don't, I'm not clever enough. Or you can try and hack a workflow together using ACF, advanced custom fields like I've seen some people doing, it's clunky, it's not ideal. Or some people use a dev tool like Block Studio. Or you might have to resort to installing a whole other block builder like Cadence or Generate Blocks just for this purpose. But you don't want to have to install another page builder on top of the one that you already use for all kinds of reasons. But what if you could just use Bricks? you know, the tool that you're already using to build the rest of the site. Then, a fairly complicated thing that until now has required some pretty good dev skills suddenly becomes ridiculously simple. Hey, Dave Foy here. Usually, YouTubers describing anything as game-changing triggers my bullshit detector in a big way. But in this video, I'm going to introduce you to a new Bricks add-on that I think is an absolute game-changer for Bricks developers. It really could be the holy grail for you providing the best possible content editing experience for your clients. It's called Gut and Bricks. It's at guttenbricks.com, link in the description. And Gut and Bricks basically turns Bricks into a UI for easily creating Gutenberg blocks. Okay, a quick warning. Gut and Bricks is at a very early stage of development right now. It's not even at version one yet. So there are bugs here and there. Although Ryan, the developer, is extremely responsive to feedback and suggestions and is developing this thing very quickly indeed. So by all means, please check it out, but just be aware that you might wanna be careful about using this on a live site just yet. But having said that, it's already very powerful. Before I start, you're gonna be wondering about pricing. So let's get that out of the way first. At the time of recording this, here are the prices. Right now, these are all one-off lifetime deals, although they are gonna be switching to an annual subscription model later in the year, which I think is wise. These prices may likely have changed even by the time you see this video. If you have any questions about Gut and Bricks, by all means, drop a comment below and ask away. I'll try and help. But your best bet will be to ask the developer himself. He's got a dedicated Facebook group, the Wired WP user group. I'll link that below as well. All right, let me show you how it works. I'm gonna take this step by step First, a quick bit of housekeeping and setup. This is a fresh WordPress install. I only have three plugins installed here. There's Gut and Bricks itself, obviously. The plugin settings are here, or you can access them under the Bricks menu down here. We're gonna take a look at the settings later on. I also have installed ACSS, because I don't build anything in Bricks without it these days. I've also got frames installed. For the same reasons, the frames library just speeds up creating content here. However, you do not need ACSS or frames or anything else to use Gut and Bricks, apart from Bricks itself, obviously. Also, I already created a new dynamic single post template. I'll come up into Bricks templates. Here it is. You can see it's set to be for single posts. I'll edit this with Bricks. By the way, this is all just standard Bricks stuff here. Nothing to do with Gut and Bricks yet. You'll always want to create at least one dynamic single post template for the design and display of your posts. So this is a very, very simple dynamic template. You can see it has a section and container. There's an H1 here, this heading. And if you look at the settings, it's set to dynamically pull in the post title. I chose that from this menu here. And then back to the structure, I have this post content element. And over in the settings, I have the data source set to WordPress. This just means every post is going to start with an H1 for the dynamic page title 
And then here where I've put the post content element is where the client's Gutenberg content is going to appear. Meaning whatever they add to the main block editor in their posts, all of it will appear in this place in the template. All right. Oh, of course, I also had to tell WordPress up in settings, template settings and conditions. Here's where I tell WordPress to specifically use this template to display posts. Again, I know I sound like a broken record, but this is just standard Bricks workflow for designing the dynamic template for individual pages. If your client is going to use the block editor to create their content, which they should. Okay, now let's look at how Gutenbricks allows us to create our own custom Gutenberg blocks and patterns. It is awesome and easy. There are two basic steps. One, for each Gutenberg block that you want to make, you create a new Bricks template. So we'll do that first. And then two, your clients will then have those blocks automatically available in the block editor in the same way they create all their other content. By the way, if you're enjoying this content and get value from it, please hit that subscribe button and the like button too while you're at it. It helps me out more than you know. Okay, let's first create a new Bricks template for a new block. So to do that, I'll come to the Bricks menu into templates, add a new template, give it a title. I'll call this one CTA1 for this quick demo. You can call it whatever you like. Then over on the right, you need to set the template type. Now this is where you would normally set whether the template is a header or a footer or a section or whatever. In this case, you need to choose Gutenbricks block. Ignore this Gutenbricks block page template for now. I'm going to choose Gutenbricks block. Now there are two other things that you can do while you're here or later if you want. So first, just scrolling down a bit on the right hand side, you can add this new template to a bundle. And with Gutenbricks, this isn't just for the sake of being neat and tidy and organized. It can actually be very useful indeed for helping your clients further, but I'm just going to skip this for now just to keep this first example really simple and we'll come back to this promise. And also up here under Gutenberg block settings, I'll just open that up here. You can add some helpful directions or instructions for your clients just to help them when they're using this particular block. So for example, you could give it a different name for their benefit only. So you could have a different name internally for your team. And then here, give the block a name that your client is going to understand. You can also add a description if you want to give them some more instructions. And then there's a further field down here if you really want to go to town with documentation, etc. But as I say, I'm just going to keep this really simple for now. So just to recap, I created a new Bricks template, gave it a title, chose the template type, Gut and Bricks block, and now let's publish. Now the template is created, we've got to actually add the block design into it. So edit with Bricks. So I need to create the CTA design here and, you know, rather than spend time building this block from scratch, I'm going to save time, go up to my template library. I'll set the source to be from frames. That's the frames template library. Always make sure that you've set to import images. Let's filter this list down to just call to actions, CTAs. Let's have a look. I'm going to go for this one. Really simple CTA card alpha insert. And here it is. It's just a standard bricks element structure. Nothing fancy going on. I'd have built the same thing from scratch. Frames just makes it a lot quicker. I'm going to get rid of this CTA link at the bottom. Right click and delete. Now components like this are meant to be starting points. I could tweak all kinds of styling here all day long, but just know that you can literally create whatever you like in the template. Whatever you have here will be the block your client is able to use in Gutenberg. I'm just going to leave this as it is for now. I can maybe come back later to amend the design and see what happens. Let's just save this. And that's part one. We created a new Bricks template for our new Gutenberg block that we want our client to be able to use. So step two, let's see how your client would then use this block in the block editor without ever having to go anywhere near Bricks, heaven forbid. So I'm going to go top left back to the dashboard. Incidentally, by the way, if your top left link doesn't go back to the dashboard, come into Bricks settings, into builder, down to toolbar logo link. And you can set whatever link destination you want for the builder toolbar logo. I prefer dashboard personally. All right, let's come into posts. I already created a new post here just for speed. So I'll edit that. Yep. Our client speaks a weird version of Latin honest. All right. Let's say the client wants to add their new call to action block. Maybe here in this post, I'll hit return, add a new block. I could come up to the plus menu here to add a new block, or instead you can just type forward slash. I'll start typing the name of the block CTA. There it is. And there it is one bricks designed CTA Gutenberg block. Yep. Yeah, I can change the text. So I'll replace the headline. I'll change the CTA text. 
I can change the text on the call to action button. I can even change the link. Actually, let's just open the sidebar. Here I can change the button link. I can add whatever link I like. And the key here is that our client can just leave the placeholder content as it is if they want to, or they can overwrite it if they want to, but they cannot change the design. The design is locked down for obvious reasons. Now sure, we've lost a little bit of the styling that I had in the template. For example, we've lost the rounded corners on the button, but it really is close enough. All right, let's come up top right, hit update. Let's give that a quick preview. And on the live page, that is looking pretty good. Of course, it's a very, very simple design, but the point is, it is exactly the same design as it was in the Bricks template. Now, of course, this block is gonna need a little bit of space margin adding to the top of it. So that's one thing that I'm gonna to need to amend in the template. I'm gonna alter a few things about the design as well. That's easy enough. All I'll do, come back to the dashboard. I'll go back and edit the Bricks template again. That's Bricks, Templates. The template was this one here, Edit with Bricks. So the first thing was I wanted to add a top margin to the entire block. So I'm gonna add a top margin to this outer wrapper. In this case, the outer wrapper is a block. It could be a section, it could be anything. So over to the settings panel, activate the class, into style, into layout. Let's add some margin top. You could use any kind of measurement you want here, you know, like five rem, for example. But I'm just gonna use an ACSS variable here. Just keeps all the spacing consistent across the site. That'll do. I want to change the heading level on the heading as well. So I'll select the heading into content. Rather than an H3, I want this to be an H2. Let's change the button as well. Let's imagine for this button, I don't want it to be my primary style. So I'll just remove that class. Let's say I want my action style instead. I could change the placeholder text that the client sees. I could even change, let's say the background color. All right, so into background. It's currently this neutral ultra light. Come into my color palette. Let's go for this yellow. Oops, that action button styling's no good now, is it? Silly sausage. All right, I'll change that to my, let's say black button instead. I could change the entire layout to whatever I like. You get the idea. But anyway, I'm gonna save this again. Back over top left again, back to the dashboard. Back into posts. I'll hit view. Let's view this post on the front end again. And there it is. Here's a margin top. Here are the new colors, the new button. And the important thing to note here is that, yes, the design has changed, the colors have changed, the spacing's changed, but the custom content our client added in this post has not changed. And okay, this is hardly a masterpiece, I know, and it is a really, really basic example, but it hopefully, quickly, gives you the idea of the possibilities with Gutenberg Bricks. It makes Bricks a UI for building Gutenberg blocks, which is incredible. And as you saw, you know, if I change the design in the template, all instances that that block has been used anywhere are updated automatically. Your client isn't gonna have to go through every post they've ever used that block on to re-add it to all the posts again. This means that you retain complete control of the design and the layout at all times, site-wide. You can make updates to the master template for each block in one swoop. Really cool. Let's do another. I'll show you how easy it is. So back up to the dashboard again, back to Bricks templates. We need a new block, so we add a new template. Let's imaginatively call this CTA2, choose the template type. I'll select down to Gut and Bricks block. I'm not gonna bother with a template bundle again. I'll show you those later. Just hit publish to save, edit with Bricks. Now let's add the content for our CTA2 block. I'm gonna save time again, back up to my template library. I'm in my frames library here. All right, let's have a look at CTAs again. And what have we got here? Um, I think I noticed one earlier that I quite liked. I think I'm gonna go with this one, CTA section delta. Now I'm not gonna mess with this too much here, just for speed, but what I will need to do is add that top margin to the outer wrapper. Now the outer wrapper, in this case, by default is a section. I'm gonna right click and convert that to a block. The only reason being, when the client adds this to their content, to their posts, in terms of semantics, I don't want them adding an entire new section inside their article. It could just be a block. Anyway, over to the settings. Let's just activate the class into style, into layout. I'm gonna add my ACSS variable again, space M, space medium. All right, you know what? While I'm here, I wanna change the accent heading styles. Okay, so this FR accent heading class, how about into typography? Let's go uppercase. Let's go a little bit bolder. 
I think I'll reduce the font size slightly. I'm going to drop that down to small. Could change the color as well. Let's come down here to my global colors. Let's go funky with my primary color there. Also, let's just get rid of a bit of this placeholder text for the client. And notice here as well, in this particular frame, we have an image. Let's see how the client can edit that in the block. All right, let's save this template again. Back over to the top left, back to the dashboard, back to our post. I'll edit the post. Let's add the new block. Um, this one can go here. This time, rather than hitting the forward slash, I'm gonna come up to the plus menu up here. Here they are, here are the blocks, CTA1, CTA2. I'll insert that, close that down. And as the client, let's just change some of this text. Say free download, download for free. Pop in some text. I'll speed this up a bit. You don't want to watch me typing. Change the button text. And again, if we open up the sidebar, click the button, you can add the button link here to any page that we like. Anyway, let's update this and preview what this looks like on the front end. All right, let's scroll down. Okay, a couple of things that need attending to here. One, it appears that the frame that I used for this particular CTA is set to be sticky. All right, so I'll fix that in a moment. And also because our post content here is in a narrow container, there just isn't enough room for that amount of padding inside this narrow width blog post. All really, really easy. Again, put to the dashboard, into bricks, into templates. All right, let's edit CTA one again. Click the outer wrapper. Ah, here you go. It has a sticky class on there. I'll remove that and save. Okay, back to the dashboard. Back into bricks templates. I'll edit CTA2 as well, edit with bricks. And on this one, I just wanna reduce this padding. Okay, so that padding I think is on this content wrapper here. I will activate the class into style, into layout, and here you go. Again, these are ACSS spacing variables. By default, they're set to extra large padding. I'm gonna link all sides and then change that to large. I think that'll do. All right, let's come back, save again, all the way back to the bricks dashboard into posts, edit our post, do the scrolly down thing again. Okay, this isn't looking too bad. So again, notice here that the design has changed. There's less padding in the left column now, but the client's custom content remains intact. We also need to change this image. I already have an image here, this one will do. Use this. Let's replace the placeholder image. Wow, that is one garish design right there. Good job, this is a quick demo, eh? Let's update that once more and preview on the front end. Down we go, down we go, et voila. You may also want to add a similar amount of bottom margin as you have at the top, but I'm not going to go around the whole template editing thing one more time. You get the idea. Now, of course, the potential for this thing is huge. Think about it way more than just dropping things like CTAs into blog posts, which on its own is pretty incredible. The possibilities are endless. You could, in theory, create an entire branded Gutenberg block page builder for your clients. Quick example. For this example, I'm just gonna first edit the single post template. Okay, that's in Bricks templates. Remember the one that's being used to display posts? I'll come into edit with Bricks. Remember this single post template is just standard Bricks functionality to display your posts. Nothing to do with Gutenberg. Bricks. And at the moment, whatever content our client creates back in the block editor, will appear where this post content element is in the template. And that content is gonna be constrained by the width of our container here. So this time, let's not create any kind of surrounding layout. Let's just have the post content element. So I'm gonna drag that all the way up to the top. I'm just gonna right click and delete the rest of the elements. So now whatever we add in WordPress in the posts should just fill the full available width without being constrained. You'll see why in a moment. Okay, I'm gonna save that. Now let's go create one more block with gut and bricks. So to the template library, one more time, I'm gonna add a new template. I'm gonna call this one gut and bricks block three. You can call it whatever you like. I'm calling it this mainly because I don't know what's gonna be in it just yet. Let's set the template type again, select gut and bricks block, hit publish. Okay, edit with bricks. Once again, for speed, I'm gonna to come to the template library into my frames library. And what I'm looking for is a more kind of fully featured section. How about this one? Yeah, pricing section mic. Okay, insert. And as you can see, I'll just close the structure down a second. 
This is a pretty fully featured section, isn't it? It's not just a simple call to action, it's an entire pre-designed section with multiple components. Now, technically, this makes it a Gutenberg pattern, I think, rather than a block, but we'll come to that in a second. One thing I'll probably do here is just select this copy, select the class, into style, I'm just gonna reduce the font size slightly. So that can be my small text. Let's have a look at these as well. Yeah, one of these labels. I'm gonna do the same. That'll do for design tweaks for now. Just want you to notice at the top in the structure, here we go, the top outer wrapper, in this case, is a section. So for this particular use case, we're gonna drop entire sections into our Gutenberg block editor. I'll just save this template. Top left again, back to the dashboard, into posts. I'm gonna add a brand new post for this example. Let's give it a title. Let's add a new block. Do this from the plus menu this time. Here it is, Gutenbricks block three. Click to add that, close the menu down, and check this out. This is a Gutenberg block, but built with bricks. It's exactly the same as the version in the Bricks Builder template. And again, I can go through and change this content. Let's say change that to pricing, change that to, I don't know, what it costs. I could change the placeholder text as well. Now, what you will find with some frames templates is that they have a feature called clickable parent. It's just where the actual link is on one of the elements in the template, the buttons in this case, but that link extends out to cover the entire column, which is a good usability enhancement. It's also accessible as well. The problem is because the whole column is clickable, the text here in the block editor isn't editable, which is not ideal for our client who wants to edit their text. So at least right now, I'm gonna to have to remove the clickable parent class from these columns back in the template. I'm just gonna just say this is a draft and I'm gonna come back to edit the template for this particular block again. All right, into bricks, into templates. And let's edit this block. I'll just close the structure down a second. So how this works is that the link itself is actually on the buttons, I think, in this frame. Yeah, there we go. See, it's got a class of clickable parent. So I'm gonna remove that from that button, click this button, remove that, click this button, and remove that as well. So now the link is only on the buttons, not the entire column. And it should mean that now our client is gonna be able to edit this text in the block editor. Let's try it, all right? Let's save that template, up to the top left, back to the dashboard, into posts, edit our new post, and now, your client can now edit this entire section to their heart's content. So you could have these as bronze, silver, gold, you can see where I'm going with this, etc. All of this is now editable. Okay, let's get this bad boy published. And let's view this on the front end. And once again, what we have here is a custom Gutenberg block that we made in Bricks for our clients to use. We've used Bricks as a UI for making Gutenberg blocks, and I cannot stress enough how massive this is. Because till now, making custom blocks like this has been out of non-coders reach. And everything is editable by our client, apart from the design, which we keep complete control of in one place. And imagine you could easily build your client a whole suite of blocks like this that they can just drop in and use even full sections like this, completely pre-designed. Here's a question. Will you be using Gutenbricks to make custom Gutenberg blocks for your clients? Got any ideas about how you'll use it? Drop us a comment below and let me know. Right, one last thing before I leave you. If you use the block editor a lot, you will already know that we have blocks and patterns in Gutenberg terminology. If you see in the editor, we have a tab for blocks, we have a tab for patterns. Technically, blocks are meant to be single, reusable components, and patterns are more like an entire section with maybe multiple components combined. So in the examples we made, maybe CTA 1 and 2 are examples of blocks, whereas the last one that we made is a pattern because it's a section, it's made up of multiple components like headings and a grid and several cards. And the good news is Gutenbricks makes this super easy so you can have your custom blocks in this tab only and your custom patterns in this tab only. The key to this is template bundles. So let's come back up to the menu and I'm gonna come into the Gutenbricks settings now. So that's in the bricks menu all the way down to the bottom. 
under the blocks tab in the settings, you can see that we currently have just one template bundle or group for the gut and bricks templates we create. It's called default. And by default, any gut and bricks template you make just gets added to this default bundle that comes with the plugin. You can give it a custom name down here if you like, but the name isn't relevant really. What is relevant are these two options that apply to this bundle. You can allow templates in this bundle to show in the Gutenberg blocks tab or the Gutenberg patterns tab or both. Now I'm sure there are a few ways of handling this, but what I'm gonna do is disable both of them. Save changes. And now I'm gonna go and create two new template bundles, right? One is gonna be for blocks, the other is gonna be for patterns, and then we should be able to find control which of our templates appear in which tab in Gutenberg. You'll see, follow me. So we're gonna come back into Bricks Templates again. For this quick demo, I'm just gonna edit the names of these just so that you can easily follow along. So let's call this one block one, okay, update. And this one, this can be block two. So we're gonna assume that these two are technically Gutenberg blocks. And for this one here, let's say this is gonna be a pattern. We'll call it pattern one. And so imagine that we want these two to appear in the blocks tab only, and we want this one to appear in the patterns tab only. I'll first create a new template bundle for blocks. And one way to create a bundle in bricks is to edit an existing template. And then on the right hand side, all the way down, you've only got to do this once. Let's create a new template bundle, gut and bricks blocks will do. Okay, add that in and update. Back to the templates library again. So you can see here, this block is now assigned to the new gut and bricks block bundle that I just made. Now to add this block to the same bundle, I could just quick edit instead, rather than going right into the template edit page. Gut and bricks blocks, okay, edit that one as well. I need to create a bundle for patterns as well. And again, I could do that in quick edit instead. It's a bit quicker as the name suggests. Template bundle, gut and bricks patterns, update. So now our two blocks are in the blocks bundle and our pattern is in the patterns bundle. And now let's come back to gut and brick settings. Here you can see our two new bundles. So again, for the default bundle that comes with gut and bricks, I'm gonna leave both of these options off. But here I'm gonna enable templates in the block bundle to only show in the blocks tab and patterns to only show in the patterns tab. Save changes. Let's check that out into our post one more time. Choose this one here. Let's click to add a new block. You see in the blocks tab, our blocks only. And in the patterns tab, you have to come down to the group we created here. Here's the only pattern that we've created so far. You might want to give the patterns template bundle a more client friendly name. And of course, when you create more blocks and patterns with gut and bricks, just assign your new templates to either the blocks bundle or the patterns bundle or both if you wanted to. Job done. There is quite a bit more to gut and bricks I haven't covered here. Like if you want to give your clients even more control, you can use ACF custom fields to render the blocks dynamically. So, you know, like say if you wanted to give the client the ability to swap an image from the right, text on the left to the other way around or whatever you can think of. This really brings a ton of power and flexibility to the table. But if gut and bricks floats your boat, and I think it will, then hop over to guttenbricks.com to check it out. Oh, and also while you're checking things out, check out my on-demand free masterclass for non-coder Bricks beginners, how Bricks can make your web builds easier, faster, and more profitable. Thousands of people have already taken this class and I reckon you'll enjoy it too. I was Dave Foy, happy block building, and I'll see you soon.